Well, when you see me standing next to some lumber, pretty much guaranteed there's some sort of a build coming. Hello everyone, Colin Kanat here for Woodwork Web. Today, we're going to build some simple bookshelves. So I went to the lumber store and they had some utility pine um, for what I thought was a pretty good price, but there's little defects in it and it's got stamps and things like that and it's just not the best wood in the world. But you know what? For bookshelves this is going to be fine because a lot of this stuff I can sand off and then I'm going to finish it with a dark dye. So I think it'll look quite nice when we get finished. So let's go ahead and start cutting this to length first of all. I need to cut these shelves now at nine and an eighth inches. Okay, I've set my fence at the right distance. I've adjusted the blade so that it's about a half tooth above the material and then we're ready to cut. There's the pieces I want to glue together and they fit very nicely but I don't want this to slide around when I put the glue on there and it tends to do that sometimes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use some dowels just to make sure that it doesn't move around on me. Okay, let's do a dry fit on that. There. Okay, now if I can get that out, oh, yep. Okay, let's glue that up. If you've ever done glue ups and you get some black spots on there, that's the iron reacting to with the glue. And if you isolate the clamps, then you don't get that. I think I've been referring to the notch that I need to cut out on the back of this bookcase as a dado. It's not a dado, it's a rabbit and it, it's sort of a just a, a little thing like this that needs to get cut out. So that's what we're going to do now. Normally I would do this on my router table but I think to try and keep this as simple as I can uh, we're going to go back to the table saw and do this. So I want to set the width of the cut by 3 8 so I'm using my measuring bar so there's 3 8 and I want to make it 1 8 high and now because this is a stopped rabbit I'm going to when I get to this point I'm going to lift the wood out so I'm going to start at this end and run it through and lift out Thank you. 
Now for the other side of the gable, I need to drop it down and there's my stop and there's my start. So this time I'm going to drop it down on the blade and run it out the end and that will give me a matching rabbit. Now there's lots of ways to attach shelves. The traditional way would be to run a dado down and then the shelving would fit in like that. That's often what I've done in the past. You could also use mechanical fasteners like these little L brackets and you've all seen these, you probably use those. You could actually use pocket screws. I've never done that and I'm a little, I, I don't know how strong they would be with pine on the edge, so I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use dowels and I've never used dowels before, but the reason I want to do that is because there's a better way of fastening. When you use dadoing, you're gluing end grain to long grain and that never really holds all that well. Okay, I have my dowling jig firmly attached and I'm just going to, oh and I've reset the depth for the drill. I'm going to move that along and we'll use our marking gauge There, I'll leave that marking gauge set and I'll do all of them the same. And you can see I'm drilling right through that sacrificial board there. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, we've finished giving the color to all of our pieces. I'm going to now give a top coat as well to all of the pieces before I do the final assembly. Now, the dye, you'll remember, was a water-based, and a lot of people don't like to use water-based because it raises the grain of the wood, and it does raise the grain a little bit, and some woods more than others. But that's not such a bad thing because it's very easy to take a scraper and just lightly scrape the top of that wood or I like to use a 320 grit and you don't sand it, you just take just a couple of swipes across and that takes all of the little raised grain off of there and it just gives you a super clean surface to work on. That's just like silk on there now. And now that's going to give me a really good surface. So I'm just going to go ahead now and give our top coat. And again, I'm not going to make you sit through all of this, through all of these pieces, but just so that you know how I've prepared the wood and what I'm doing to do the final finishing.
Well, we've done the final assembly and I wanted to clamp it to make sure that it was going to be nice and steady. And we're just going to take the clamps off now. And now it's just an easy chore of realigning that. There we go. Now all we need to do is put the back on. For a small job like this, I'm just using a 5 8 nail. Well, there it is, the finished little shelving unit for my office, complete with all the dust on the floor in my workshop here. And you know, we just used some utility pine for this did a custom die uh, that would match other things in my office and used a water-based varathane on it. And it turned out great. It's not a, a masterpiece, it's just a utility shelving unit. And that's really how simple it is to make a shelving unit. Lots of different ways of making it. This is just one version. Well, that concludes our video on making the shelving unit. Before I go, I want to give a quick shout out to Chad, who is selling some of his turn pens at an event I attended not too long ago. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, we ask you to do that. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. I'm Colin Kanad for Woodwork Web.